Last night, White House COVID advisor Scott Atlas appearing on The Angle, he offered a brutal assessment of the public health commentariat. He didn't name names, but he didn't have to. History will record the faces of the public health expertise as some of the most sinful, egregious, epic failures in the history of public policy. And honestly, some people say a crime against humanity. These people should be held accountable to what they said. Of course, he's talking about every single public health expert who told us that lockdowns work. They, they also told us that Europe had a better approach and that vaccines are the only way to get back to normal. If you're talking about getting back to a degree of normality, which resembles where we were prior to COVID, it's going to be well into 2021, maybe even towards the end of 2021. Get ready for a really tough time this winter and get ready to hunker down. We're still going to have a lot of death and disease between now and the end of the year. Reviled by these same people last spring, we now see that Sweden had the right approach, and then the U.S., led by Trump, was a close second. Now, if current trends continue, we'll end up having fewer cases than Europe and a far better economy than the Eurozone as well. Trump has pushed therapeutics, and as a former patient in a high-risk group himself, he showed us he recovered within 10 days. He had, you know, obviously, great uh, therapeutics behind himself. But he showed us with his own actions that we need to get back to work even during a pandemic. Unless you're a regular angle viewer, you may not know the real truth, and that's frightening. America is going in the right direction on the stats that matter. So while case numbers may be going up because we're testing, what, a million people a day? Deaths are down. And while case numbers are up because you know we're testing all that, we have to remember CNN doesn't know the truth. Not a single state in this country is heading in the right direction with coronavirus infections. We do this every day. Uh, orange and red are bad. Uh, this is a horrific, a horrific map. There's no green state on that entire map now of the U.S. Small household gatherings are a growing source of coronavirus spread. Now, what's the chance that none of these people have gone to a dinner party, without masks in the past six months? Zero. Public health officials like Fauci have a duty to consider the unintended consequences of the pandemic response, but they rarely, if ever, do. Hundreds of scientists have signed on to the Great Barrington Declaration against lockdowns and for a return to common sense anti-COVID measures. But the last thing Democrats want to hear are these four words, go back to work. We've known for some time that Scott Atlas and the body language from the White House has been that they are supportive of the idea of herd immunity. They are now inflicting their idea of herd immunity on the country. This is the embodiment to me of, of anti-science. The science? Now that's funny. There was never any real science behind COVID lockdowns. And the evidence that all of our mask wearing works is also murky to say the least. A new CDC study shows that the majority of those infected with COVID-19 always wore masks. Whoops. Oh, wait. That must be why Joe wore not one but two masks yesterday when visiting Florida. Tomorrow will be three masks. By Election Day, I don't know, maybe he'll have 20 overlapping masks on his face. Now, doesn't that make you all feel safe? And that's the angle. Joining me now, Dr. Harvey Risch, Professor of Epidemiology at the Yale School of Medicine. Dr. Risch, uh, beyond lockdowns, you say that the experts who've run our response, and certainly running the European response, are killing Americans in other ways. Explain. Uh, good evening, Laura. Yes, I think that it's taken a very high toll on people out of work, people limited in, in their economic opportunities, having to pay bills and rents and mortgages and so on and not being able to do that. And it's taken a toll on their mental health as well. The inability to seek medical attention that they would otherwise have had to, to get for other diseases is, is a, a very important component of the cost of the lockdown. Well, there is a moment from uh, Dr. William Hazeltine uh, lately where he's poo-pooing, along with a lot of other experts who I'm sure you know make a lot of money being on a lot of boards, 
uh, poo-pooing the idea of acquired or herd immunity. Watch. Herd immunity is another word for mass murder. That is exactly what it is. If you allow this virus to spread as they are advocating, we are looking at two to six million Americans dead, not just this year, but every year. The reason for that is that there is no such thing as herd immunity. Uh, any response to that? I'm not sure what he's wearing. Is that the Star Trek Enterprise outfit? Whatever. Dr. Rich, uh, what do you what do you explain I don't know how he could say that, honestly. People do have some degree of immunity that lasts for at least a few months, if not quite a bit longer. Uh, we know that herd immunity does not have to be 80 or 90 percent, that there was a paper in Science by Tom Britton a few months ago that showed that with, with communities the way they normally mix the, the people in communities, the herd immunity can be obtained somewhere in the 40 to 50 percent range. And herd immunity is what's going to save the country from, a, from an endemic pandemic, and that's what we have to face. Dr. Irwin Redliner of Columbia University wants Fauci and company to resign, but here's why. I have an op-ed coming out tomorrow morning that will be calling for Fauci and five of his colleagues to step down en masse now before the election. Donald Trump is unhinged and has caused a, an incredible number of, of, of problems, including a lot of unnecessary avoidable deaths among people uh, who could have survived if we had been doing things the right way from the beginning of this crisis. Dr. Rich, you uh, likely think Fauci and um, Redfield should resign for other reasons, I imagine. Correct. Uh, but uh, blaming the president for the deaths when the FDA caused the deaths is, is really hypocritical and, abs and absurd. Well, we also don't know how many excess deaths there are. I know in Denver they found out uh, doctor, that there were um, an excess number of individuals dying at home from heart attacks in the two weeks following their really strict lockdown. Uh, people were just uh, refusing to notice their, their own signs of pain or not wanting to act on it. So there are all sorts of uh, ripple effects from these lockdowns that I never hear Dr. Fauci talk about, ever. That's correct. That's all going on. Dr. Rich, thank you so much.